Operation Cobra contributed to the success of the Allied efforts to free Nazi-occupied France in the summer of 1944. Planned by General Omar Bradley, the operation would consist of a massive bombing run to open up a track that would allow Allied forces to advance in their efforts to take France back. Consisting of 550 fighter bombers and 2,000 B-17 flying fortresses, the aircraft would drop over 5,000 pounds of ammunition. But it's a little-known fact that Operation Cobra began with an accidental fratricide, turning the operation into one of the worst friendly fire incidents in U.S. military history. Pushing through the hedgerows. Operation Overlord, the Allied mission planned to invade Western Europe in the summer of 1944, was showing signs of delay. The Allied operation had initially sent almost 200,000 American, British, and Canadian troops to France. After the operation launched with the Normandy landings on June 6th, most of them remained put within a narrow bridgehead awaiting orders to move forward. Besides heavily fortified German Panzer divisions, the Allies' main problem while attempting to push inland was the rough terrain in northern France, with large amounts of bocage and mud walls known as hedgerows. With its height and dense shrubbery, the Normandy foliage provided Germans with a ready-made defense. To safely push through the vegetation, American troops welded scrap metal to their tanks to help plow through the bushes. The conditions made for a slow advance. Breakthrough The Allied forces were expecting more troops in France to continue with the invasion. To facilitate the build-up and their path forward, American top brass put together an operation to break out from the Normandy beachhead and resume ground warfare. On June 27th, Allied troops secured Cherbourg, the water port located on the U.S. sector's western flank. An arduous battle for the city of Cannes ensued. Located in the British and Canadian sectors to the east, Allied ground forces had failed to seize it on D-Day. The military efforts around the city succeeded in drawing the bulk of the enemy armor to that sector of northwestern France. On July 10th, Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery, commander of the 21st Group, General Omar Bradley, commander of the U.S. First Army, and Lieutenant General Miles Dempsey, commander of the British Second Army, met to discuss their next strategy. Knowing progress was slow on his front, Bradley put forward a plan dubbed Operation Cobra. The plan. British forces were stationed in the city of Cannes. Operation Cobra would pressure the Germans' western flank and distract them. The strategy would allow Allied troops to move south towards the Brittany Peninsula, then east to surround the German forces. For Operation Cobra, Bradley and the 1st Army would deploy a massive bombing run on a rectangular 7,000-yard stretch along the saint lo perrier route, opening up the track and surprising the Germans. The expectation was for Nazi forces to break their position and allow U.S. troops to burst through the area. The bombing run consisted of 550 fighter-bomber aircraft and 2,000 B-17 flying fortresses, the massive four-engine strategic bombers capable of dropping 4,800 pounds of ammunition onto a target. The target area needed to be carefully delineated, as U.S. infantrymen would be awaiting directions near the bomb's stretch of road to attack from the northern flank. U.S. commanders would put up colored smoke on the corners as a signal. After the wave of airstrikes, the 9th and 30th Infantry Divisions, led by 7th Corps Major General J. Lawton Collins, would move towards the area to open a breach within German lines. The units would hold the flanks while the 1st Infantry and the 2nd Armored Divisions drove through the gap, followed by a 6th Division Exploitation Force. If Operation Cobra succeeded, American forces would be able to escape the dreaded hedgerows and advance to the Brittany Peninsula. To support Operation Cobra, Lieutenant General Dempsey initiated Operations Goodwood and Atlantic on July 18th, followed by Operation Spring days later. Although Allied troops took substantial casualties, they succeeded in capturing the remainder of the city of Cannes and expanding the Orne Bridgehead while committing the Germans to the eastern sector, far away from Operation Cobra. Only two Panzer divisions now faced the First Army. Not so friendly fire. Operation Cobra was initially scheduled for July 24th, but it was delayed due to poor weather conditions. Still, around 350 bombers took off from their base and approached the target from the wrong direction, attacking perpendicularly to the road. When the aircraft dropped their bombs, some of them hit the American 30th Division, taking the lives of 25 soldiers and wounding over 100. Confused soldiers even opened fire on their own aircraft. Bradley was furious, but the operation had to go on. Operation Cobra the air phase of Operation Cobra was launched on the morning of July 25, 1944. Around 600 Allied fighter bombers attacked the Panzer Lair Division's strong points and enemy artillery along a wide strip of ground located in the saint lo area. For the next hour, more than a thousand heavy bombers of the U.S. 8th Air Force, 
saturated a rectangular area on the saint Perrier Road, followed by a third and final wave of medium bombers. Together, they dropped over 4,000 tons of bombardment, wiping out three battalion command posts and damaging their armored personnel carriers. But once again, some of the aircraft approached the road perpendicularly and dropped their bombs onto Allied lines, taking over 100 American soldiers' lives and wounding five times more. Historian and World War II infantryman Paul Fussell quoted combat reporter Ernie Pyle in his book The Boys' Crusade, The American Infantry in Northwestern Europe, quote, And before the next two hours had passed, I would have given every penny, every desire, every hope I've ever had to have just been another 800 yards further back, Pyle wrote. From then on, for an hour and a half that had in it the agony of centuries, the bombs came down. A wall of smoke and dust erected by them grew high in the sky. Then we were horrified by the suspicion that those machines, high in the sky and completely detached from us, were aiming their bombs at the smoke line on the ground, and a gentle breeze was drifting the smoke line back over us. The German Panzer Division still bore the brunt of the offense, while U.S. soldiers ran for their lives trying to avoid being hit by their own bombardment. German Division Commander Lieutenant General Fritz Beyerlein described the Operation Cobra attack in a post-war interrogation, quote, It was hell. The planes kept coming overhead like a conveyor belt, and the bomb carpets came down. My grenadiers and the pioneers, my anti-tank gunners, they're holding. None of them have left their positions, none. They're lying in their holes, still and mute, because they're dead. My front lines looked like a landscape of the moon, and at least 70% of personnel were out of action. Dead, wounded, crazed, or numb. Byerland calculated casualties and woundings as 50% due to bombing, 30% by artillery, and 20% by other weaponry. After this troubling start, the American offensive gathered momentum. German resistance broke down as scattered remnants of the units escaped toward the Seine River. Lacking resources to continue fighting, the entire Normandy front soon collapsed. Back on the U.S. front line, American troops began to search for Lieutenant General Leslie McNair, who had traveled from England to observe Operation Cobra. Even though Lieutenant McNair was well behind the intended target area, he was found blown 60 yards away from his cover position. He became the highest-ranking U.S. soldier to be downed in the European theater of operations. Pointing fingers. After the two friendly fire incidents during Operation Cobra, high-ranking officials placed the blame on each other. Some officials blamed the 9th Bomber Command, but the 8th Air Force's official investigation concluded that the 2nd Air Division was the real culprit. In his memoir, General Bradley accused the bomber pilots of lying to him when told that they would attack parallel to the road. But heavy bomber commanders claimed that Bradley misunderstood explanations that such an approach was impossible because of time and space limitations. Reporters were prohibited from disclosing what happened that day. However, photos from the Associated Press still made their way back home. Pictures of soldiers digging their friends out of the ground are still mislabeled as Americans digging out Germans from their foxholes. Still, Operation Cobra was deemed a success, as ground forces had successfully pushed a vulnerable German offensive in their path to take over the country. It was a crucial tactic in securing an Allied victory in the Normandy campaign. Bomb Attacks After their introduction in the 1930s, mass-produced heavy bombers have proved a powerful addition to attack strategies in the U.S., providing critical offensive mass at crucial moments. And although these massive bomb attacks were unreliable in the 1940s, the close air support operations during the Battle of Normandy were the precursor to other bomber strategies used in later ground support missions in Korea, Vietnam, and even the Gulf War. Operation Cobra marked one of the first, and the last, time that a massive group of bombers would support maneuvering units on the ground in a World War II operation. Until that point, the U.S. had mainly conducted area bombings. On the day of Operation Cobra, General Dwight D. Eisenhower had traveled to Normandy through the English Channel. Disappointed about the operation's toil of casualties, he decided never to use heavy bombers to support ground troops ever again. <laughs>